Foreclosures are common on construction sites where large, heavy doors are involved. The installation of floor closures might seem for some a daunting task. This program is aimed at demystifying the process and demonstrating the relative ease of installing ricks and closures, the most reliable floor closures anywhere. Floor closures aided by door and frame mounted pivots are invaluable because they alleviate stress on door frames. By distributing door weight to the floor rather than the jams, high use and extra heavy doors generally outperform doors hung on butts or continuous hinges. With closures concealed in the floor, decorative doors are free from exposed hardware. The door should simply be able to open and close efficiently, function well over an extensive life cycle, and most importantly, it should look good. The following installation features a Rixon 27 offset floor closer. The procedure was performed at the Southwest Carpenters Joint Apprenticeship Training Center in Silmar, California. It was one of many ongoing training classes for apprentices and regional trainers offered by the center. The people milling about in the background are carpenters and trainers attempting to attain a better perspective. The featured installer is a qualified door technician who has been installing floor closers for over 30 years. Before beginning, the door frame must be in place and a cavity provided for the closer in the concrete floor. This hole can be cut after the slab is in place or blocked out before the concrete is poured. A template showing dimensions is included with your closer. For the purpose of this demonstration, a metal box represents the hole. First, let's take a look at everything you'll need to install the closer. A cement case. A floor closer body. Check the model number and hand prior to beginning the installation. Four brass screws for attaching the closer body to the cement case. A spindle washer. Two C shims. A top pivot. An intermediate pivot. Note. Rickson pivots and floor closers are shipped with both wood and machine screws. Determine that you have the right quantity and type of screws before starting. A bottom arm for the underside of the door. A finished arm cap with attaching screw. For doors without thresholds, a finished cover plate is provided. When installing closers, no toolbox is complete without a Rickson 185 Quick Spotter Kit, which includes metal straps for positioning the closer in the cavity, screws for attaching the straps to the closer body, spindle locator plates to properly position the closer, and a bubble level. Next, to ensure accurate alignment of the closer and the top pivot, we suggest you use a Model 2604 Pivot Alignment Tool. Commonly available tools you should also have on hand include a plumb bob with a line at least as long as the height of the door, a crowbar, a framing square, a number 3 Phillips head driver, a number 2 driver, a large blade driver, a torpedo level, and a crescent wrench. It is a good idea to have some breakable thread lock on hand. Blue Loctite is ideal. You'll need some quick drying cement along with a bucket and stir stick for mixing the cement. And you'll also want to have a trowel for distributing quick dry cement around the closer case. Three Allen wrenches are required. One fits the arm set screw. Another is for the pivot cap. The third wrench is for the alignment tool. To begin, insert the closer into the cement case and secure it tightly with the supplied screws. Attach the leveling straps to the top of the closer with screws. With a framing square, check to make certain the door frame is square at both top and bottom corners. Install the jam leaf of the top pivot onto the header. Slide the aligning tool insert into the frame portion of the top pivot and tighten it 
with the provided Allen wrench. Slip the aligning tool body over the insert and tighten it. Insert the plumb line through the pivot alignment body and pull an adequate amount of line to allow the bob to almost reach the floor. Make sure the frame is square again by measuring the distance from the line to the inside of the frame at the top and bottom. Also, measure from the outside of the frame, bottom and top. Lower the closer into the floor, suspended by the straps. Place the pivot locator over the spindle and move the closer into position adjacent to the frame. Position the closer so that the center of the spindle is aligned with the plumb bob. Confirm that the cement case is square to the opening. Insert the leveling screws. Place the bubble level on top of the spindle. Make sure the body is level by using the leveling screws. Double check with the torpedo level. When the closer is accurately aligned, pour quick dry cement into the cavity. You'll need enough to completely fill the gap beneath the closer case and attain a depth of approximately one half inch up from the bottom of the case. While the cement sets, attach all needed hardware to the door. First, Install the door portion of the top pivot. Install the door portion of the intermediate pivot. Next, attach the bottom arm to the underside of the door. Once the cement has set, it will be time to hang the door. Remove installation tools. Place the spacer washer on the spindle. Position the door above the closer and lower the arm under the spindle. Use a crescent wrench to rotate the spindle while moving the door back and forth. After a few twists, the door should work its way down onto the spindle. Align the door and frame portions of the top pivot. Install the pivot pin with the hole aiming downward. Push the pin up into the jam portion of the pivot. Screw the cap onto the pivot. The cap holds the pin in place. Prop the door open at 90 degrees. Slip the jam section of the intermediate pivot into the corresponding door mounted part of the pivot. Now fasten the jam section to the frame. To do this may require you to temporarily create additional separation between the door and the frame. Notice how the installer in the video is putting a moderate amount of torque on the pry bar to create a bigger gap between the door and jam. The pivot should now snap into place. Allow the door to close. All of the weight should be resting on the bottom arm. To ensure this, we utilize the intermediate pivot. First, remove the cap on the intermediate pivot. There is an Allen screw inside the pivot. Turning this screw raises the door. Two 1 16th inch C shims are provided. Fill the gap between the arm and spindle washer with one or both. The flat inner edge of the shim should contact the flat side of the spindle. Tap the shim into place underneath the closer arm. Relieve the weight from the intermediate pivot by turning the adjusting screw in a counterclockwise direction. This will lower the door to rest on the closer. This is very important because the weight of the door needs to be on the closer, not on the intermediate pivot and jam. Replace the pivot cap. Take a look at the gap between the door and frame. The gap should be consistent along the entire perimeter. Tighten the arm locking screw until you actually feel it contact the spindle. Open the door again and let it close. Move the door back and forth while completely tightening the arm locking screw. Now it's time to fine tune the closer control valves for optimal door performance. 
The latch speed valve controls the door during the last 10 degrees of travel prior to latching. A door's travel speed at this point is critical to overcome weather stripping, latch bolts, and stack pressures. The closing speed valve controls the door from full open to about 10 degrees. You will want to set this to a speed you feel most comfortable with. The back check valve adjusts the amount of hydraulic resistance that begins at about 70 degrees in the opening cycle. Back check should never be turned to a point where it acts as a dead stop for the door. The closer in this installation has a selective hold open feature that allows the door to be a hold open or non-hold open model. Always adjust the closing speed first. Next, set the latch speed and finally back check. These valves are very sensitive. Slight adjustments will generally do the trick. It is important to point out that when finished concrete work is done around the closer, it should match the slab. Quick dry cement or grout should not be used. Floor closers need to be protected until finish work is complete. Arm caps and floor plates are then installed. Before you install one of these high quality closers, remember that a quick spotter and pivot aligning tool can help make this job relatively easy. Both devices are sturdy and reusable, so you should keep a set in your toolbox. All Rickson closers are shipped with installation instructions, templates, and step-by-step -step directions. These are available on our website, along with other helpful items including owner's manuals, troubleshooting guides, replacement product videos, and an online version of this installation video. Now that you've seen the step-by-step -step installation of a Rickson closer, you should be ready to try it yourself. With a little practice, your skill with Rickson installations will prove valuable for years to come. For additional copies of this program or to request training at your facility, contact Rickson Technical Support. <laughs>